Good morning everyone, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living channel. Uh, in this channel we like to talk about homesteading and hydroponics, raising Idaho pasture pigs, chickens, eggs, food preservation, freeze drying, and news that affects us uh, homestead wise. And yeah, uh, it's actually a very beautiful day. It would be a stunning Central Oregon sparkling day, but cold. So uh, today is Monday and uh, we all, we all obviously got to go feed the piggies, check on all the animals. And uh, we got our premier fencing in for our chickens, uh, the 42 inch. I'm waiting today to get my power supply uh, once I get that, we can uh, set that up after, but before that, we have to clip the wings of the chickens that are in the uh, chicken tractor. And once they, once they get, <clears throat> once they get that, they'll be qualified to uh, free range, which is kind of exciting. Uh, we're kind of, it's kind of funny. I never thought this is a problem, but we're low on chickens. Um, we have 10 chickens <clears throat> and they've served us well. But now that we're getting into uh, uh, free ranging, uh, we're going to definitely have to increase our uh, chicken quantities, and uh, we need to build some more equipment. Uh, highest priority this week will be uh, building, uh, adding on to our compost bin, and then building and starting the project of building my very first chicken shaw, which will have will be like a cart. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that'll be interesting. And we have guests coming over, uh, cause this is the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, I know our videos are out a little farther, so it'll be probably just past Thanksgiving. And, uh, uh, because of the timing of my videos, I want to wish everybody a great Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and I gotta tell you, I'm thankful for the abundance. Um, that homesteading is gives Sherry and I. Um, we uh, we're really happy with all the food that we grew. Now we have the pigs and uh, developing the back property and stuff. We have a lot to be grateful for. So uh, I have to say the thing that we're really grateful for is the abundance. So with that in mind, let's go feed some piggies. So I have to laugh. <laughs> kind of brainstorming with Sherry what we're going to start doing with the back property. Well, we're definitely going to do the Idaho pasture pigs. And Sherry's definitely in love with the Idaho pasture pigs. And I'm mentioning, kind of nudging her, we might want to get a cow or two. I don't want a milk cow or anything. I want to get maybe two uh, meat cows. But uh, I think she's more interested in expanding the... Um, the, the pigs um, as we go through the processes and uh, I'm kind of good with that too so it'll be interesting what we do with that back two acres in the meantime I see some very happy little pigs back here and uh, they're uh, they spotted me I gotta tell you these guys are adorable for pigs and uh, there they are right there. Hi guys. Good morning piggies. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? There we go. Do some pets? Pets. 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 And the baby. You want a pet? Come here. Aw. He's trying. Alright guys, so, sun's in the lens, sorry. I gotta go grab some food, shut down the fence, and uh, also let's check, before we do that, I put a new uh, uh, submersible heater in their water, <laughs> and it worked great. Hi guys. 
I think they're glad that their water's not frozen. So, very cool. I had to laugh. I had the cord kind of out a little bit. One of my, I think it was Zelda, the black one, grabbed it and started running around with it. So I was chasing her saying, let that go. So we've had to move the water very close to the fence to try to keep the pigs from grabbing the wire. <clears throat> so, so far so good. So let's get them some food. We got the pigs all fed, they're happy. Heading back over to the can here, put these away. And uh, you see our premier fencing. The premier fencing's a 30 inch, which is great for pigs. But for chickens, we had to get a taller one. So I believe this is a 42 inch. So that's just, this is it right here. And uh, it's all ready, but I can't electrify it until I get my charger. And there's no way that I'd do my chickens without it being charged because the premier fence not only keeps them in the area that we want them in, but it protects them from predators at night. And uh, we got lots of them here. So, yeah, I am anxious to uh, let our chickens free range. These chickens here will join them. Um, and uh, we've got to clip their wings too. So far right now, their food's looking good. Probably got a <clears throat> couple of eggs to get. And uh, yeah, we'll go from here. Yeah, I stopped in at the greenhouse here. And uh, I gotta tell you, my little broccoli here, that looks like something you see at the grocery store. It's beautiful. And we're gonna, I wish it would've gotten bigger. And it might get a little bit bigger. But we're going to have to gobble it up this week because it looks delicious. And uh, I'm still surprised how Sherry's flowers are doing. Uh, i got to admit, I have not been watering them as good as I should. So we're going to water them right now. Come, let's go. Oh yeah, i got to follow up on my chicken I made yesterday. I used... Uh, uh, if you look at yesterday's video, I made some chicken wings with uh, Crown Royal and uh, it was pretty darn good. <laughs> um, not my favorite, but uh, uh, that particular you know, um, recipe was from Living Traditions uh, making beef jerky and I highly recommend it for beef jerky. Um, not, I mean, not my favorite for uh, chicken wings, but uh, it was worth a try. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was good. It was like, uh, from eight, to, from zero to 10, it was definitely like an 8.5, but normally my wings can be more like a 9.5 to a 10. And, uh, but yeah, it was kind of fun to try that. And, uh, I know it's like, what a waste of Crown Royal. A bottle of Crown Royal around here lasts like two years. Well, it's a little bit later in the day and, uh, I wanted to put some subject time into uh, the question, how much does it cost to start a farm? And I was inspired by Goldshaw Farms. And uh, I guess one of the big things I want to point out right away is, uh, what the heck is a farm anymore? Um, so the point being, is at least on our channel, we kind of show you alternative ways to grow things and alternative ways to uh, have animals. Uh, so your initial cost is obviously property, a home and that kind of stuff and healthcare and all that. Um, so we chose to live in a place that's fairly close to society, but yet we still have five acres and we have the ability to grow actually anything we want here. And uh, 
when I first got here, I thought I was limited, but um, no, you still got to do things within re reasonable cost. You know, you got to know wherever you decide to invest or buy, find out what the limitations of the or ordinances are in the area. So uh, there is farms out there that are killing it with uh, income on just an acre and a half. Um, uh, so the first perception everybody has is, oh, I got to buy a hundred acres. No, <laughs> you don't. Um, one is, uh, if you really, really want to go hardcore into farming, if you want to call it farming, uh, I like the word homestead because it's more variety. Um, then, yeah, I mean, if you're doing animals and you want to do the paddock kind of thing, like we're doing rotational things, uh, it'd be nice to have a lot of land that you could rotate your animals on. And uh, I know another big subject is is making sure you have water. And uh, we uh, we have our own water. We, that's our pump house right there. Uh, we had to drill. No, it was drilled down probably 450 feet. So, uh, but we have really good water. Um, so investment wise, um, buying someplace new and building everything new could just. Oh my gosh, I, I got a quote for a pretty small pole barn and they were talking thirteen to sixteen thousand dollars is like are you kidding me um to build the stuff from scratch would just be a killer so um you can look at it as just buying another home um of course it depends where you're at you're in california just another home can be up to a million bucks this same home here in california would be worth over a million dollars uh, but we didn't pay anything like that we're one third of a million, let's to say that word, let's, okay? Um, so, uh, uh, infrastructure is the one that was a killer. So the more that you can do yourself, the better. Of course, time is an issue. Now I'm retired and I get a pension, so that's my extra income, plus the YouTube stuff and um, a few other things, uh, the podcasts make us money and stuff too. And of course my wife works, that's where we get our insurance. Um, until we we're at the age of retirement, uh, then we could look at Medicare. But um, until then, we have to, we're like most average Americans, we got to get our health care. And buying private health care doesn't make sense right now. And uh, the older to get, the better insurance you really kind of want. But uh, yeah, so when we got here, whenever you buy a house too, and, and if you're like us or kind of a uh, kind of prepper mode a little bit we invested a lot of money first of all in the house so we put new siding on the house we put a that a hardy plank on so that was kind of pricey and we put a new roof on the rest of the house structurally was pretty good shape um and needless to say uh, uh we have a shop um but it lacked a couple of things that we really wanted like some outside power um uh, outlet for our RV and better lighting inside the entire garage. It's kind of a two section. We have a gr shop area and then we have what we call the barn uh, back in. That's where we keep our tractor and stuff. And if you're fortunate I and mean, you're buying from someone that's got um, a farm, a lot of times they'll sell some of their equipment with it, especially if they're done with farming and are maybe getting older and they just want to go travel and make things a little simpler. Like the guy that lives behind me had 27 acres um, and a hardcore farmer and he had enough. He's a lot older than I am. So he bought a five acre place behind us and he's still killing it with a really good uh, garden back there and stuff. And then we showed you that um, we showed you the alternative way of growing things is using hydroponics. Hydroponics is amazing. So we built our own greenhouse and uh, didn't have much knowledge of how to even run a greenhouse, let alone do hydro, hydroponics. So our first year, we did pretty good for our first year. I wouldn't mind another greenhouse. Um, and I built built it by hand like I did that one. Uh, one, I, I mean, I want one greenhouse devoted to just like tomatoes. And I have a floating raft system in the middle of that one, so it takes care of our lettuce. The second one, I would do primary things like beans, uh, 
cucumbers, things like that, and use the Dutch bucket system. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to tell here. So, a lot of money, probably a good almost $50,000 of, of our money went into uh, improvements in, on the house and infrastructure as far as the shop and elect, elect, electrical. That's probably a fair number to say. So, even Gulchos Farms says having some working capital is important. Our goal at our age is not to use credit cards or go into debt. So um, the proceeds we made from selling our house in Arizona before we came up here was our little nest egg. And uh, we definitely dented it, um, but it's still there. Um, not as big as it was. But um, the first fact would be don't worry about size. If I would, from an acre and a half on up, you can do all kinds of farming. And of course, the other thing he brought up was, um, what do you want to farm? Are you just interested in growing stuff? Do you want animals? And are you going to be interested in permaculture? And you don't have to do permaculture, but if you really want to take care of your land uh, and mixing your animals with your gardens, it's a really smart thing to do. Um, but it's not easy. And of course, when you do that, you got to invest money in building some, um, like I got to build a ch mobile chicken tra tractor really, really bad, uh, or a chicken shaw. Um, and, you know, buying my premier fencing, uh, a, a complete set for 100 feet and a charger, uh, you're looking at four to five hundred dollars, depending where you buy it. Um, so you imagine we've gotten a couple of sets and some extra fencing uh so everything you do uh you know i i i'm perplexed sometimes i watch all these shows of these guys getting these new tractors and getting all these new things and building all that stuff is like where in the heck are they getting the money and i sure hope they're not going in debt to do it so uh yeah the more you could pay for uh in cash and not use credit cards and that because um Farming is not very profitable. Most people have secondary jobs. Um, you know, I have an extra income, Sherry's income, and, and our health care comes from her, uh, YouTube income, our podcast income, things like that. Uh, I can tell you, farming for us has not been profitable. And a lot of times you got to plan to make money that may be two years ahead. For example, uh, our Idaho pasture pigs. Very, very excited to be in that business. Um, and so, you know, you have to start somewhere. So you got to get your, you know, your pigs. And of course, in Idaho pasture pigs, you want registered. You want purebred, um, if you want to call it <laughs> purebred, um, Idaho pasture pigs. Um, and then you want to keep them registered and keep up the paperwork and be very cautious of inbreeding and things like that. And uh, over time, once those pigs grow up and then the first two females have babies and stuff, then we can start thinking at a positive income. But to do Idaho pasture pigs, uh, probably have well over $1,500 invested already. And uh, not counting the fences and the buildings, uh, let's say two thousand dollars. Well, let's say three, two hundred and fifty, twenty-five hundred dollars would probably be a fair number, and uh, that's an investment in hoping that we pull off a profitable business with Idaho pasture pigs by either s selling feeders or selling registered pastured pigs uh, for people in the future. And of course, I've got to build infrastructure for the feraling. And uh, so I'm not done investing, so probably $3,000, if not better. Um, but, you, you know, you can buy a, a home like this, and now it also depends where you're at. Like, we're in central Oregon, and the housing prices are much more affordable than, say, closer to the big cities. So you can get a big bang for your buck. Um, so if you sold a house in California or Arizona... Um, you'll have a little extra chunk change um, to use for infrastructure, your little nest egg. Um, 
Of course, everybody's scenario is a little different, but I would recommend, like Sherry and I did, is to take some of those proceeds and make sure you any debt or credit card debt or anything you had, get rid of that first. Um, and then you got to be patient, and that's hard for me. Sherry's more patient than I am. Uh, to build the stuff, to raise your your pigs, your chickens, uh, whatever, it's it's a step by step process. And even Goldshaw Farms, I mean, he started small, and, and he's suggesting you start small. I suggest the same thing. Uh, but even when you get your acreage that you want, we have five acres. We're perfectly happy with that. Um, it's going to take time to build up your stock, your flocks, your herds, whatever you're growing. It takes time to get the uh, uh, the money we put into the greenhouse and all the uh, hydroponics. You know, that was a couple thousand there. Um, and in the first round, we lucked out and we did actually pretty good for our first round. And now we know a few things we need to improve on. But uh, hey, we're 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 nailing it on extra food and and we're learning how to preserve of course there was investments there last year we bought a freeze dryer uh, bought a lot of equipment before we even had food coming in because we had to learn how to pickle and and uh, water bath things and, and preserve and dehydrate and then uh, freeze drying the whole works so uh, um, yeah you just need some sacrificial income or a nest egg to handle just all these little things but buying the house and the property was like buying another house. We just went to a region that house values were lower. So uh, that's how it worked for us. So how much money do you need to buy a house and uh, buy a, a farm? Well, it starts off of how much money do you need to buy a house, first of all. Then how much money do you have to handle infrastructure, building things, making uh, fences, um, we're spending $3,000 just to have some fencing done in the outside property. We're not even using all of our property. We will be. Um, that was our first goal. Well, that's our next goal. It was kind of like we st did this. Now we want to expand and actually utilize the whole property. I mean, you got five acres. You may as well use it, right? And uh, a lot of people don't feel the same way. Some people like five acres and don't want anybody around them. And they just like the peace and quiet. And they don't want to do the farming and all that stuff. And that's cool, too. There's a lot of people like that here. Um, so, yeah. I hope that kind of gives you... I can't give you a number for... You know, depends on what you want to do. If you want to learn how to grow a lot of food in a small area, build a, a greenhouse. Put in some greenhouses and hydroponics and you'll kill it. Um, you don't need... You could do t uh, a million dollars worth of business probably in two acres if you just did greenhouses and hydroponics. And uh, so, yeah, you, you got to define what you think you want to do and what you think you might do in the future and make sure the property you buy is one that can handle a lot of that stuff and the dreams you may have. And uh, But don't buy more than you need. Uh, I just I see so many people thinking it's got to look like the Farmer John farm and uh, with technology and hydroponics and greenhouses uh, that changes the whole thing uh, your focus will be more infrastructure so uh, I hope that kind of helps and kind of gives you an idea of uh, you know uh, if you're thinking about getting into homesteading or farming, uh, they both are just pretty much the same word. Um, and then if you are into being a little more self-sufficient, uh, you know, whatever you're buying, can it be self-sufficient? And I'm talking about resources too, like electricity and power and water. What if you don't have those services anymore? What would you do? So you also want to make sure you're main resource is a uh, um, has systems on it that can like our house can hook up to a generator uh, we got a new plug on the side just for that we got an extra power set up on this well that i can hook a generator up to and still pump water um 
you know, and you can remember we probably want a tractor in the future or some people use uh, the little four wheelers and a trailer. Uh, those aren't cheap. And uh, yeah, so, but enjoy the, the, the journey. Um, nothing, I mean, I just still, I look at last year's video and that area back there was empty. And we put all that those systems in last year. And uh, it kind of feels good. And now in the winter, we uh, are getting used to having pigs and then they'll move out to uh, the other property and I've got to build a, a furling area for them and uh, learn to rotate them out there and keep them protected. Uh, we put security systems in here so we can monitor our critters uh, even in the house. Um, yeah. <laughs> What kinds of crazy things you got to consider? So uh, in the comments below, love to hear from you. Tell us what you're thinking. Any questions you might have. I'm trying to sneak up on the, on the German Shepherd. She's on top of a pile and she's uh, digging a little. And I'll see if I can catch her doing it. It's kind of cute. What you doing, Belle? <laughs> Cinder's very patient with that dog. But uh, <laughs> I didn't catch her digging, but it was cute. What are you doing, guys? There she goes. I believe they call that the zoomies. <laughs> you can see she keeps the older one young. Uh, really does, really does. But anyway, guys, if you're gonna start a farm or get a homestead, or maybe you wanna go off grid, um, enjoy the adventure. Be patient, try to do things in cash. Try to do what you can by your, your yourself um, to save money and labor and stuff. And uh, before you know it, you'll have kind of a working operation in no time. And uh, you just keep adding on patiently, saving money. Uh, yeah, you'll probably have to sustain a second job or have another source of income. Um, and most of us do. And uh, including me, even at my age. Uh, I don't know, there's a few out there at, appear to be trying to do things without secondary jobs and uh, I, my hat's off to them if they pull it off but <clears throat> um, you need to build up your livestock you got to build up your growing ab abilities you got to build up your infrastructure and uh, just keep that in mind and uh, be patient along the way so I hope that was kind of good information for you. I'm gonna wrap this video up because I'm sure it's a long one. But guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, really important, I know I say it every video, but please take the time to like, subscribe and share our videos. It really helps us out. Um, and you can count on our videos every day. Uh, it's very rare that I miss any. And uh, yeah, um, got lots of things coming up this year. Oh my gosh, you're gonna enjoy uh, as we expand with the ch uh, the pigs, expand our property, uh, bring in some new systems, modify some of our growing. We are going to put some above ground uh, gardening in in some uh, different areas here, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's just it's relentless; it never stops. So, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.